You're listening to Ignite Your Success, a podcast that inspires fitness professionals to build a strong business that enables them to serve more people and engineer the lifestyle they desire. It's Brad Shepard here, and together with Jason Yabanowicz, we're best known for running Trainer HQ, a community of passionate and profit-hungry fitness business owners that make a massive difference in others' lives every day. Each episode will unpack for you exactly what's working and deliver best practice strategies so you can confidently grow your business and make a huge impact. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Trainer HQ podcast. And I'm joined by Mr. Jason Yabanowicz. How you going, bud? Mate, I'm bloody incredible. Yeah, no music today, mate. Just thought we'd just rip straight into it, eh? Oh, fuck. Fair enough. Yeah, you were hoping for the music, were you? Well, I, it goes like that, and then the applause, and you'll be. Uh, anyway, <sighs> right, okay. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Mate, today we're talking marketing and specifically burrowing down into lead magnets. And we want to talk about lead magnets. We want to go back and do a little bit of, I guess, a bit of history on you know where they've stemmed from. But more importantly, how fitness professionals can use these effectively in many facets facets Ooh. of their business. Yeah, first day with the new lips there. Love that. Uh, mate, you've we go back right <clears throat> when we think about when we first used lead magnets, right? Mm-hmm. And and I probably backtrack in twenty odd or so years. And I want to talk specifically about your experience with them, and even prior to a lead magnet. You know, effectively, <laughs> what started was an ebook, mm-hmm. and those ebooks could be sold. So, could, do you want to fill us in on on your first journey when you kicked this thing off? Yeah, I mean, you're right. They they actually are two different things because because back what twenty odd years ago, uh, before the technology came out, selling ebooks, you could sell the ebooks, which are now known as lead magnets. So, what what you used to be able to sell and charge for that information if you're an expert in an area yep have now morphed into information you get away for free mm. so it probably was 20 years ago i'd say it was yeah <laughs> yeah 20 years well, ago when we look at us yeah, trying to hq 17 years ago launching this business and then yeah. you backtrack to to when you were doing that i mean it's we're probably more than 20 years probably more than 20 years ago yeah. but there, i mean it was a it was a way that uh, you could sell information and and content and so mm. When I learnt all this uh, stuff, it was about putting together a PDF. Yep, and that's and for people who are sitting there going, "What's the difference between an ebook and a lead magnet?" Quite mm. simply, it is a is a, a PDF document <clears throat> that someone would download with information in it. That's as simple as that. Yeah, and you'd have a you'd have a well crafted uh, landing page, as they call them, a sales page. Yep. Typically, back then, long copy. Yep. Video wasn't so much around then in terms of a video sales letter. No. Uh, but you would have ads or some other way because, again, remember, uh, Facebook wasn't around then. Yep. Uh, Instagram wasn't around then. Mm. So it, predominantly you would be running, you know, you'd have Google ads. Yeah, and Google ads were very cheap back then as very, well. That's, that's very cheap part. back then, yeah. So back then you might pay, you know, less than a dollar for, you know, for an ad, depending on that space as well. Like if you own that space or it wasn't really flooded, yeah. uh, then it would be cheaper, of course. You would drive people to that. Um, where the expense was more was if you weren't good at copywriting, you'd, you'd get a copywriter mm. to do your um, sales page because it was very important. Uh, the words were the most important thing, you know, back then, not so much how it looked, yep. but you would have a very, you know, um, well-crafted um marketing message on that sales page to then prompt someone to buy an ebook yep and uh, the one i constructed it was called the fab five the fab five the fab five uh, hey <laughs> and it was the five exercises that you yep. could do at home to yep. not only get uh, uh strong yep um increase mobility yep. lose body fat but yep. you could do it you know in your backyard and that's basically where i uh i constructed it like photos it was just photos in an ebook yeah breaking down photos of you Part of me doing yep. doing the exercises, yep, and uh, with the, with an explanation of how you would do those, yep. but it was around again about the marketing message. Mm. So it was like, well, like, could you go and find that stuff online? Yeah, you could. Yeah, you, you could go and do that, but the difference was the way I marketed it. So the way it was sold, the copy, all the rest of it. So the principles stayed the same. You had to have an engaging 
uh, Google ad yep. that would grab someone's attention, yep. someone who was ser- searching for how to lose weight or get strong, whatever the keywords that we used at that time were in there, to drive someone to uh, what looked like information but was really copywriting, yep. sales persuasive copy, to then go and click to buy the ebook for... I want to say, I, I believe I must have been selling it for somewhere around about $30 mm, Yep, back then. And um, <laughs> people would go and purchase that. Uh, also, because of the payment structure and all that was different, but then I was using, uh, it was called ClickBank. Yep. ClickBank. And uh, I used to get checks. <laughs> <laughs> checks would arrive in the mail from ClickBank. They were in America. So, yeah. You know, they'd, I think... They would take their clip, so they would do that. Yep. They'd take their clip. Yep. And uh, I think you had to... Um, they would only send you out a check maybe when you'd sold X amount. Yeah, you hit a certain threshold, so they're not going to send you... A, a yeah, they weren't going to send you a yep. check every check for $30. It might be like once you'd, you'd made $100 worth of sales, they would they would send you one out. I think that's how... I mean, we're talking a long time ago. Yeah. But to answer your question, I was mm. selling... Like, uh, look, I believe on a weekly basis it got to the part where I'd be selling anywhere from, you know, two to three grand's worth of these ebooks. Yeah, um, yeah. And I, there wasn't really anything after that, but that was an era where ebooks become very popular. Yeah, and yeah. And people would buy them, right? I bought a shitload of them back then myself. Uh, not only that, is that, you know, for a lot of people back then, that was actually a business model. Yeah. It was like just purely sell the product and, and that was your, that was your, Cor- that was your model. Yeah. And, and then there was affiliates, right? So then um, I had a bunch of people that they went and, they didn't have their own product, yep. but then they would promote mine. Yep, and then they would take a maybe, clip of it. Yeah, yeah that's right. So, so they could make money as well. So that's the way it accelerated quicker because I had the connections and I had all these people that were then also promoting mine and like a lot of other people's products as well at the same time. Yeah, it's super cool. And I remember you telling me about you had some sort of alert set up on the computer because back then, you know, again, no Facebook, no, no socials, all that sort of stuff. So setting up an alert and, and it used to ding or used to do something when the sale come through. Yeah, like every morning I'd wake up to like 20, 30 purchases, whatever it may be. Yeah. So, you know, it was a, it was a great experience because – I probably it probably took me. I I had about three or four, I believe, beforehand, which didn't really take off. A bit like any piece of marketing, right? So <laughs> like it's everything. Like, hey, yeah. not everything's going to hit the mark. Not everything's going to be for your ideal client. That's right. Mm. And uh, it, so it was a great, you know, when you when you wake up and you get that first sale, it's like yes, you know, it's <laughs> like it was, it was it was the best feeling to know that while you're sleeping. Um, people were purchasing all around the world, right? Yeah. Were, were downloading your ebook and purchasing it uh, from that. And, uh, you know, also I was building the database, but uh, yeah, it was a great experience to wake up and say, shit, yes, made 20 sales last night, made 30 sales last night. Like, yeah. you know, uh, mutual friends of ours, the people who, who you know, I learned from this, Andrew and Daryl Grant, they had one about how to get pregnant. And um, you think it'd be pretty obvious. That's right. Um, <laughs> but that was, it, uh, they had something along those, that headline. But it was really about those people who struggled because they had struggled. Yep. Uh, falling pregnant and they had all their things about how to, you know, do that naturally without IVF. And yep. that thing went off, you know. So I learned from those guys at that time, plus a few other marketing experts. Yeah. I remember um, Andrew and Daryl. I mean, that was their, that they'd made their first um, quarter of a million that's um, right. in, in selling yeah, two, e-books. 250, yeah, they were 250K, right. they, yeah. yeah. Which, which we yeah, had back then was like... For, for selling an e-book, yeah. it's pretty impressive, right? You yeah. Know. On something that we all think is uh, pretty obvious, right? <laughs> yeah. But the way they structure it and put it together was, you know... It was excellent, and that that was the era back then. Yeah, you know, people were um, they would pay for that, but you had to do it properly. You still had to know how to write the headlines, the marketing. Hundred percent. Couldn't just put but, shit out there. No, yeah. no, and that was the thing. You know, like when I first tried, I just what, what was probably not one. It was like getting the niche right. Like, yeah. who was there a big enough audience? All, all the typical stuff that falls in line with promoting anything you're doing. Uh, but then it was then it was about going okay well changing one at a time that headline's not working maybe it's not the right product um, the copy's not right so once I once all those things fall in line and you test and measure uh, you know that's when you know, I guess the Fab Five was the thing that really really uh, took off stuck for me. out was the thing for people yeah and, and so now that's the the trip down history and that's twenty plus years ago now like yep. I was saying. 
the, the, the same <coughs> rules, the same standards apply. Now, what has changed? Where has the game changed? Well, we know for a fact that Google is, is not cheap anymore. Uh, meanwhile, we've had a bunch of social platforms emerge o- over that time. And effectively, what's happened is information like that can, some, can sometimes be viewed as a bit of a commodity, meaning that back then it was a bit of a rarity to be able to get this. And But then what's happened is over time there's been a lot of information. Anyone can go out there and, and, and Google and YouTube and find stuff and you get on Amazon, you can buy a Kindle and all that sort of stuff. So what we do now, however, the principles still remain the same. So right now, and I'm not saying that anyone can't do this, but I'm saying it's probably pretty rare that we've had clients or we've even sold an ebook in this day and age, right? Yeah. People still do it. Um, it's possible. I, it, it's got to be done really well. Mm. Uh, but there are still people who do it. And look, I've, I've spoken to a few people recently who they've – uh, who, who have clients have joined our program and they've when I checked out their stuff they'd had them on their link tree and you know people selling trying to sell an ebook for seventeen dollars and you know ask them how many have you sold and I already knew the answer for asking him because I looked at how they promoted it and mm. the copy wasn't right the headline wasn't right the, the sales page wasn't right and they go none and and I go well yeah and you can get really good at <clears throat> driving people to that particular uh, ebook and. And do a better job of marketing and selling or you, you could give it away for free, free for the opportunity to get that person's details and build the relationship with them add value and that's how we know how the system works more so these days yeah and that's exactly the concept that we're speaking <laughs> of here the, the the word lead magnet it it exactly as the name describes the idea is you're going to take a piece of information mm-hmm. good quality content that speaks to your ideal client that solves a problem that they might have and you're going to freely give it away. And the concept is give away some of your best stuff and in exchange for that person's information. Now, in some instances, that might be only an email. In other examples, it might be an email and a name. Yeah. And it might also be an email, a name, and a phone number. And I'd say that's probably the ultimate in terms of you acquiring a lead. And the goal is to, as the name implies, lead magnet is to bring people in, you acquire their details, and then it's your job from a business, a marketing perspective to start what we refer to as a nurture process. We want to take these people through a journey so they can see what you do. And back to what you would put in your lead magnet, what you want to do is you want to show people how good you are by actually physically showing them, by actually giving away some of this information that when applied can make a difference in them Mm -hmm. or for them. Yeah, absolutely. And where a lot of people go wrong with lead magnets is that they i think people understand that oh i should have something Mm. to give away for free there's there's not a lot of uh success by design and that process so what i mean is that they go i'll just put together like a a a recipe book i mean whoop de doo Uh, it's it's about if look i can look at someone's lead magnet and go this person has a very clear understanding who they're trying to target or or they don't Mm. so while hey look hey you got something that's great there's no real strategy or understanding and typically because i don't understand you know the marketing side of things effectively and any lead magnet that you put out there in my opinion and my experience should be that it helps pre-qualify people that you're wanting to have more of as clients so if you just put out a recipe book it's general. It's general and it's, I mean, people get shit because it's free if they come across it, but it's going to make it harder. If you think that person's then going to become a client of yours, then the chances are you're, you've got an uphill battle where if you're targeting, say, um, menopausal women who are having trouble to lose weight, they're lethargic, they're tired, or whatever it may be, it's a very specific uh problem that you're aiming to solve and it's very clear on who you help and work with Mm. and if the content uh, matches up with that particular person when you get that inquiry or that lead come in from that person downloading or whatever it may be in terms of lead magnet you know that that person has stuck their hand up to go that's a problem i have and it's something i want a solution for and then if you're back and system uh, from that lead magnet is in place, then the chances of that person being a client is greater. One hundred percent. And there's a couple of things, really key things there. So we'll talk about automation soon and how how that can be set up 
quite easily. But the first part is because it is free, and, and what I heard you say is that uh, I guess people out there, we've seen this over the years, who because it is a free resource, there's probably not a lot of effort being put into it or a lot of thought process being mm-hmm. put into it. So I'd say that's that's a big trap for someone to fall into is just going, oh, I'll, I'll flick this thing out for free and you know, e- easy to find some recipe or whatever it might be, but doesn't really speak to the person. So that's trap number one. <clears throat> On the flip side, at the totally other end of the continuum, we've seen people construct 150 page manuals <laughs> which are which are chock full of great information and completely overcooked spent way too much time on it way too much effort but no strategy on getting people on board so you go okay how many how many people have downloaded this one? Oh, you know 11 <laughs> and you go inside this 150 pages we've probably got 10 of these lead magnets in there on different topics yeah. and so forth so it's two two um traps there that are very mindful to look out for yeah Going back to each, you know, we talk about Train HQ and our clientele and what I'm hearing is really critical for them to hone in on who their ideal client is, what their niche is, more importantly, what problems can they solve. So if you specifically deliver body transformation, fat loss, what's your lead magnet going to be about? Well, it's going to be specifically about that. It's going to be targeted on fat loss. And what could it be? It could be a written document, very much like you described. There could mm-hmm. be information in there that people could digest. There could It could be a series of videos that you've put together that people get access to. It could be a pre-templated workout that sits inside your training app that you could be giving mm-hmm. away. There's, there's so many things that could classify as a lead magnet. Yeah. And when, when you're doing this stuff you talk about the back end uh you know what's really important is that you've got your uh database or your leads segmented so for us for example we will have one with you know online trainer playbook so it speaks to anybody who's doing face-to-face but they want to add online they're looking to go online so what does that tell us so this person has downloaded you know how to build a successful online um business coaching business Mm. Now, I don't want to send that person stuff about how to build a studio because that's not what they are interested in, right? Because they've downloaded a totally different resource. So also think about it from that point of view of going, well, these are the areas that I specialize in. I help men over 40 who have got low testosterone. They want to build it up naturally. They want to get over some injuries that have stopped them from training or whatever the problems are that you solve. Mm. I've put that lead magnet out there. Which might might be of a general nature in terms of information, but it gives them enough to go. This guy is an expert, or this person's an expert in that area. Uh, and then you want to only send them information that's relevant, right, to to that particular person. Again, if you want to kill your database, just set, start sending them stuff that's you know not really meant for them, and they'll unsubscribe. And so all that hard work is now gone to waste. Mm. Yeah, it's a gr- really great point and, and I guess we're getting down into the segmentation and the nitty-gritty and how to really make effective use. So if we go to the basics of it, what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to send someone to a landing page, right, uh, to a lead magnet page. Yeah. This thing doesn't need to be overly complex and that's the next part is people can, can you know, back 20-plus years ago, we're talking long-form sales copy, we're talking lots of information there. In this day and age, it can be very simple. It can be a benefits-driven headline, Subheadline, which compels the person to want to take the next step. There might be a small introductory video which runs for less than a minute and it might be as simple as, hey, grab my, my XYZ guide, grab my training program or whatever it is down well, the bottom. Well, look, look, look at one of ours, like say, our mar- talking about marketing, our marketing strategy template, right? So <laughs> this, this would help anybody watching this going, well, I'm not even really sure how to come up with my ideal client, my niche, all that stuff. Well, that template helps step you through exactly how to identify that. If you look at the actual where people go from the ad, it's very basic. Very basic. To the, to the part where we look and go, fuck, is that all, is that all we did? <laughs> is, uh, that, is that the best we had <laughs> on that day? <laughs> but because it's a template and it gets straight to it, and it's very clear on what the outcomes would be. People don't need over complex or a long sales copy trying to persuade you to get it because it's very obvious about what it does, right? Yeah. Um, but this is where then the you got to let the statistics do the talking because we look at our data and for two years that thing's been running very successfully. So we wouldn't. Why would we change it, right? Yeah. 
just just leave it. So the statistics have to feed back to you now. Like if we started to get our own opinion of what what that should look like, maybe we start mucking around with it and we kill it, right? Potentially. So the statistics you've got to track. So how many leads we're getting? What cost per lead are we, are, are we acquiring from it? And you know how is that then converting into maybe people who want help because they go, I've got the information. Yeah. Uh, you've helped me with that part. There's one or two things. People want to go and do all the research, figure out all the rest of the bits we've been talking about. Or they'll go, hey, I'd love you guys because you guys are the experts doing it for 20 plus years. I'd love you guys to help me fast track that and work with me to implement it mm. step by step. So that's the concept of any lead. Right, here's the information now. Mm. You can go and try to then action that plan all by yourself. Or if you'd like to book a consult or a call or whatever the next step is, then I'd love to find out more about how you actually work with people to implement this with them. Mm. It's it's the con- it's a concept taking somebody <clears throat> through that nurture process and like you said, back to two years of us running paid ads to that particular page, that particular campaign, and we look at all the the clients, two hundred plus clients every year that come through Trainer HQ, and a, a large number of them get attributed to that being their first step. Those of you tuning in on this, if you're curious about this marketing strategy template, it's going to form um, two purposes for you. Number one is you want to get the con- content get your hands on it so that you can actually then devise your strategy because it steps you through the whole process on how to identify who you're going to target and how to piece this together. Number two is you want to follow the flow yourself now that you're tuning into this to go, okay, this is what the guys do. So step number one is that we've got this page and you can replicate that sort of concept. And what we'll do is we'll stick that link to that marketing strategy template in the show notes here, YouTube or Spotify, wherever you're watching this, you can go through the journey and you can go through the funnel effectively. Yeah. So speaking of funnels, this is where the automation part comes in. And those of you who have may have heard about MXP, uh, you know that's definitely a recommendation of ours. So if you want to start setting this, this process up, you want to keep it simple. Are there ways you could do it without MXP? Yes, there are. But if you want to take it to the next level, if you want to streamline your business, then you want to get yourself involved in MXP. What does it mean? Well, we take, take to the landing page. Now, Jace, let's talk about what happens when someone actually does put their details in. What's the next step that happens? Well, you'd have a series. Of, well, firstly, you, you know, like talk about MXP. Um, just to pause for a second before we get into that, it's like people always go to us, oh, I want to get more leads, get more leads. And I always say, okay, well, what if we got the marketing bang on for you? Because you, at the moment, you your copy's not right, your headline's not right, your call to action's not right. So we get all that stuff sorted for you, which we can do quite simply. And uh, tomorrow you wake up and you've got like 30 or 50 new leads. New leads and what are you going to do? And it's a look of bewilderment on people's faces. They go, oh, fuck. Um, yeah, I think that would be a bit of a that would be a bit of an issue. And I go, well, that's why you need a back-end system, be it MXP, like we're talking about our system, right? Because you want to have all that stuff automated so you're not there sitting there trying to, you know, manually send people emails and follow-ups and all that stuff. And a lot of people have, if they're lucky, they'll have a Google spreadsheet where these names and contact details live. But a lead comes in, you, you need to map out what is the next step. So I put... My details in after that page. Is there a thank you page? Is there a one time offer? Is like, well, you've got them there. Do you have a compelling reason why someone may want to get the seven dollar product? That's the next step. Is it like, hey, have you got the right uh, video sales uh, content there that gets them to book in? Look, if you're looking at taking some action now, this is the now thing, not later, then fill out this inquiry form and we can get in contact and and then you've got your you know information that would persuade someone to do that or is it just simply thank you mm. you're going to be taken to a download page to get that or you're going to be looking for your inbox because there's going to be an email the link where you can download and get the information so that would be the next thing after their details and you have to think about what is the process mm. not just here's your lead magnet what do you want to do what's the journey that you want to take that person on Typically, there's going to be some form of email sequence. Mm. You might have an SMS automation set up. That, that, that's why they would put their details in because if they want to get it SMS to them, that's the reason why they could put their mobile number in. 
what's the journey then that's going to take place? What happens? Do they get an email straight away, another day, another two days, you know, every three days? At some point, are you then going to make a call? Do you send them more quality information, testimonials, case studies? So you have to think about that back end part. It's not just it's not good enough just to get the lead. It's what are you going to do with that lead once you've got them? Yeah, and this is what people commonly know. You might have heard the word funnel, and this is exactly what a funnel is. It starts on with somebody coming in. You think about a funnel, and it, it drips down part by part and setting all this stuff up. This is where the automation comes in as well. So it's like you don't have to sit there on day one and send email number one. <laughs> A day later, send email number two. This is all done for you, and it it takes a lot of the grunt work out of you having to to do this personal follow up. So that's that part. Let's let's say that we've we've got that part sorted. The next <clears> part is also thinking about the lead magnet from the perspective of going well. It's not just to acquire a new lead. Now that is one part of it, and and soon I'll run through some some numbers and and you know what you you might expect to gain from something like this. But it's not only just to acquire a new lead because we're, what we're talking about here is acquiring a new relationship, someone you might not have otherwise met. You want to take them through a nurture process. You want to get them to know who you are, know a bit about your business, see some success stories for them to make a decision on whether they, they might want to take the next step and you might want to take the next step with that person. But move it over to, let's say, somebody who hasn't downloaded this resource, right? And you've met with them. Maybe you've met someone on the gym floor or they've been referred to you or whatever. This is also a piece of your own business's intellectual property. And intellectual property is, is data, it's templates, it's resources inside your business that you own, your business owns. And once again, you'll freely pass it on to this person. And the purpose of passing it on in the sales process is to build credibility, is to show again this person that you are the expert by literally showing them how good your stuff is. Mm -hmm. So that as someone's going through this sales journey, not only are you having some sort of DM with them, potentially a conversation, maybe there's a face-to-face -face meeting, maybe they're coming in for an introductory session, a free trial in the gym, whatever it might be. But at the same time, they're receiving this information and what you're putting in front of them is quality information. And someone who's in the process, in a cycle of making a buying decision, the thought process that goes on inside that person's mind is going, wow, this person really does know their stuff. They're sharing all this information. The follow-up has been amazing wow, what's it going to be like when I become a client of this person? Yeah, absolutely. And and that's why we teach is that all this by design, I like it when we're meeting somebody who goes, I've, I've downloaded your, your number one best-selling book. I've uh, got the marketing strategy template. I've watched and listened to your podcasts. Uh, what does that tell us when that person is in front of us is that there a lot of that information is done, the heavy lifting. When someone, if we meet somebody and go, oh, I haven't, I don't really know you guys, I don't think about you. Yeah. Uh, we've got a, a tougher job to do because now we're personally trying to convince that person or ex show the value. And while that can be done, uh, it's way better if we go, well, look, well, currently at the moment, these, these are your main challenges in your business. It could be like, I'm not converting in sales. All right, well, I'm going to send you through our sales training, our, our podcast on it. Uh, our uh, sales framework script that you can um, start to get involved in, some case studies, testimonials of what happens when people have used that training and then we'll reconnect because that way when we're in front of them, they're a lot better qualified. We've got all the stuff you said, the, we're, we're now the authority, we're the expert, all that stuff and you can see this forms a, a bigger part of the puzzle uh, again, you, you're probably watching this going, yep, yeah, I've, I've, I've sat in front of a new client, be it online, um, Google meeting or Zoom meeting or in the gym scenario, and this person has no idea about me, has no idea about what I offer. I've got no none of those things, no credibility. I've offered no value. It's a harder, it's a harder job to do. Mm, yeah, 100%. And it's just what we see this process in place and we – we're very transparent on how we do it. So everything we teach when someone becomes a part of the Trainer HQ community, we teach the methods that we use. Why do we teach that? It's because they work. Yeah. <laughs> it's because they've been proven for now decades to work and we go, hey, this is the strategy we're going to unpack for you and, and all you need to do is follow the process, you know, and, and it's that's where we the implementation comes in. We help you construct design 
strategize, construct, and then implement the the from start to finish. And that's why it's that's why it's so powerful for people. Well, have a lot of our clients go, oh, that's what you guys. That was what I experienced with you guys. That's yeah. exactly the process. And I, I say to people, well, look at look at the stuff firstly that grabs your attention, so it stops you scrolling, or has caught your you know attention. You've been searching on Google, whatever it may be. Look at what did you do next. Uh, if you uh, switched off, you go well that that particular bit of marketing, or whatever, didn't didn't work for you anyway. Didn't work for you, but if it did, and you went through that process, then you know that's the formula that works well. The real question is: Is that what you're currently doing in your business? The challenging part is there. Like, there's a bit twenty years plus of doing this stuff. Uh, there is a bit to really know and understand and learn. And again, that's why uh, I say to people like, look, here's the plan and strategy for your business. You've got two options. You can go and try to figure all this stuff out on your own, which you could do, you can do. It, it will just take you at least, I mean, I think minimum two to three years because you're trying to do it in amongst everything else you're doing, running your business, family if you've got it, other stuff. So you, you aim, you're trying to do it in your spare time or... People go, well, the hell with that. I can see you guys clearly are the experts in it. Can you work with me to help implement it just so I can do this in a shorter timeline? And if you can do it in a shorter timeline, what does that mean? Mm. Well, you're increasing profitability, you're having more freedom, flexibility, having more predictability with your future and your business, uh, and you can help more people. So it's it's really, that's the people, people that are left for that option. Very rarely do I see someone go, yeah, I think I'll, I'll take the additional five or six years to, <laughs> to figure it all out my own. Yeah, it's it's the smart way. It's the entrepreneurial way. And if well, you, it's, what I, it's what we did. Yeah. Like it's, That's right. Know, coaches and marketing and sales and everything. Because they go, I'm, I'm like, I'm, hey, do your own learning, audio books, reading and all that stuff. But for me, it's like you, you do this really well. Yeah. Uh, I'll work with you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's where we both started, right? The turning point for both of us, independently at different points in our life, uh, similar timeline, but at different points. The turning point for us was getting our first coach and mentor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's where everything changed. That's why, you know, 20 plus years later, we, we do this. We're so passionate about it because it was such a game changer for us. Yeah. Let's talk numbers now. So let, if you're sitting there and going, all right, well, you guys are talking about paid ads and all this sort of stuff, and I've never really dabbled in that before. So I guess first things first, of course, if you've got some sort of organic audience, you've got some following on socials, Insta, Facebook, wherever it might be, of course you're going to promote it to that that group of people, right? So mm -hmm. that's the first part. But as we all know, the algorithm wants you to pay, right? So it might want you to boost posts or whatever, and that's just that's a fact of what it is. So that's... I guess first level is you definitely want to get it out to as many people that you can uh, for free without it costing you a single cent. Next level is to go, all right, well, I might um, you know, put $5 a day to boost a post or whatever, which could encourage more people to get there. And that's the next part. The last part is to run some sort of paid ads campaign. Now, if you were to go to that level and, you know, this is running paid ads is a, whole, a topic for a whole nother conversation but there's two paths you can go down number one you can go through the process of learning it yourself and you know over the years of us doing this we do have some clients who choose to go down that path and go yeah i'd like to get knowledgeable about this and so forth uh, we have others who go look i don't want to delve into this i don't want to try and stay updated to all the changes in the algorithm all the rest of it so what i'll do is i'll, I'll get someone to do that for me now the getting someone to run paid ads in this day and age once again is quite a I say an easy task or easy to find somebody, plenty of people out there. There's some plenty of shit ones, so you've got to make sure that you get the, the right type of guidance. But let's say that you have someone who can champion that for you. There's obviously going to be a fee attached to that, and that can vary depending upon who you work with. But let's talk about the raw cost of ads. So let's say you were in, in one month. Let's say you were to run a campaign, and let's say uh, directing them to your lead magnet, and in one month that brought in 20 leads. Okay, now, how much would you pay for a lead? It can vary depending upon your target market and all the rest of it. But let's just let's just say somewhere from twenty to thirty dollars a lead. That's not uncommon. All right, so not let's now. let's go to the extreme example. Let's go thirty bucks a lead. That's what it's going to cost you. So in one month, you brought in twenty people. It cost you thirty bucks per person. So there's a six hundred dollar spend. So right, you spend one hundred and fifty bucks a week, roughly. $600 for the month and it brought you in 20 leads. Now, out of those 20 leads, people don't just miraculously turn into a client, right? So you're going to have a nurture process. You're going to follow up with some people. And let's say that out of those 20 people, half of them, you had some form of connection with, i.e. they responded, they, you know, they did something 
the other 10, you didn't hear from them, right? So they were just probably receiving the emails and whatever and you might have reached out and nothing happened. We now got 10 people. Of those 10 people, let's say five of them, you were able to get into some sort of discussion to the next point, right? Some sort of discovery call where you pre-qualify them and so forth. And let's say of those five people, you were able to convert three of them. Mm -hmm. All right, so we started at 20. We got down to 10. uh, 10 went to five. And now you converted three out of five, which is, you know, 60%, which is probably a pretty conservative conversion rate. So... So now you've spent your 600 bucks for the month and you go, your average spend, let's say someone who's offering either online coaching or, or face-to-face, you know, somewhere in around about, you know, 80 to 100 bucks a week, let's say for a single session or a week's worth of coaching. So to use nice round numbers, let's just go, you're $100 for a single PT session and you can apply this to any, any method that you got. You're $100 for a PT session. Let's say of those three people that you converted, each of them decided they're going to train with you once a week every week on in, in your program you go beauty that's great okay so i've converted three people now and let's say that you have a minimum term of three months which is what most of our clients would have but you also know that most clients when you backtrack you go i've had clients with me for two three years but we go let's be really conservative and go the lifetime of a client would be at least 12 months all right so when you first inside your first you know um three months what what's that client's value to you at minimum mm-hmm. It's going to be about twelve hundred dollars, right? So now we go, okay, twelve hundred dollars. That's for client number one. Double that for client number two. We're now up to twenty four hundred dollars, and triple it for client number three. I'm now up to thirty six hundred dollars. So I spent six hundred dollars, and that is brought me in guaranteed thirty six hundred dollars. So your return on investment is very healthy there. That's step number one. Step number two is to go, I also know that people stay for at least 12 months. So that means that each of these people is worth about $5,000 per year. So I go three people, that's $15,000. I spent $600 and that brought me in five fifteen thousand dollars mm-hmm. Plenty of numbers there. Short story in amongst all that is that's a very healthy return on investment. And like I said, you're going to need to either... Uh, you know, find a way to learn that, construct it yourself, or get someone to help you, which shouldn't come at a really excessive cost. But it just gives you some basics on, on what's possible, and that's only in one month. It's why uh, we'll hear people say, oh, I tried Facebook ads and it didn't work. But then when we uh, look through their their process, when we do a, like say our blueprint with them and we're looking at their plan and their agenda for their business, and I go, yeah, you, you did Facebook ads, number one, the ads weren't on point you know it didn't match up i can see why the ads didn't get a good response secondly uh, your process after you get the lead is nowhere near where it needs to be and then lastly your sales uh you know your sales process and your sales skills is lacking so at that case people would look at oh it's going to cost me that much but like if all those things are in place it gives you confidence then to invest in that just just like any investment right Mm. like be it shares, whatever. If you don't understand how shares work, people look at it and go, well, I invested 10 grand, but now my shares are worth six grand. Well, yeah, that's how the market works. But over time, it's going to come back up, right? So you feel more comfortable to invest. If you understand that the long game in business going, there's the short, the medium and long term results, because what you're talking about is there'll be some people that if you do everything right, they'll they will the ones you get the leads they'll be ready to sign up there'll be other people that aren't ready yet but they'll be on your database and Mm -hmm. if you play the long game and you have a good follow-up sequence you're putting out good information you're finding ways to keep them sticky to you and um you you'd be their trusted advisor at some point when the time's right they'll they'll become a client you know (laughs) i had a client who i first met um it's just come on board now i I met him back in 2019 Mm. But they've followed us, their podcast, they're on our email database, they get regular up cup contacts throughout the year and then they're, now they're on board. But the point being is if you don't understand the strategy and you don't know that part, then you're just putting up some ads. Like I, we hear all the time, oh, I'll, just, uh, I'll, just, I'll do some ads mm. and that's it. That's the strategy. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, that's hope and pray. It's, it, the real question is, is what you started with is what would you be prepared to pay to get a client and you just articulated that, right? You go, well, now you go, if I know all the stuff we've been talking about and that's in place, I would definitely pay $20, $30. Like if someone said to us, hey, 
we've got like a hundred people that I think would be that I know would be good clients for you. They'd be ideal fit. We would go. What what would you give me for each one of those? opportunities we go yeah we'll give you 30 dollars for each one of those people easily yeah because we're confident in our system and our back end we know what we're doing with it mm. and the beauty of this back to the automation that the, that's what you said the well two things the implementation is like you said it's like going getting this part correct uh, secondly <clears throat> with that automation part in the example i gave 20 leads you sign up three of them there's 17 other people there that are sitting there as yeah. as, as possibilities for the future and uh, it just again we look back years you said the person 2019 we we look back on people we've got really great record keeping here we look back when someone first joined our database 10 years ago they've been sitting there reading emails tuning into us all the rest of it and the time has just been right for them yeah it's 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 why like you know the the money's in the database you know again too many times people get disheartened because they go oh brad didn't sign up he didn't sign up yeah so what you just that was it, eh? Yeah. <laughs> have you done any follow up? Have they received anything from you? Have, you know, like, and I go to people. Have you ever put your information to something and just for whatever reason you've had personal stuff going on? It just you know it wasn't the right time. Yeah, yeah. And so that's the same as other other people. So you got to look at the broader picture. But so many times, hey, you do all that hard work at the start, and then people just don't utilize the full potential of this whole structure of, you know, building a database, getting leads, following all the way through. And that's why things like MXP make so much life so much easier because, yeah, you get busy and then you go, oh, shit, that's right, I was supposed to email that person back and I didn't. And it's it takes you manually to do it and for mm. you to be able to think about it or maybe you're putting in your Google Calendar and then, fuck, you get busy with something else and it gets forgotten about and there's just so much missed opportunity that – people don't tap into because they don't understand this part of the business mm. so i guess to wrap up the action steps those of you who are on this the, the links below you'll find them wherever you're tuning into this number one download the marketing strategy template for two reasons number one so you can get the information get the content get the learning plus follow the system mm -hmm. number two check out mxp and how that can further automate and streamline your business so you can grow and scale and then finally, if you want help with the implementation side of it, reach out to us because we can have that conversation. We can show you what the step-by-step -step process looks like. It's as simple as that. And if you're watching it on YouTube, make sure you like, you know, comment. It all helps the channel. And uh, again, we want to help more people. If it's on any other platform, Spotify, iTunes, whatever, and you know somebody who this could be very beneficial for, make sure you share it with them. Because again, our mission is to be able to create better educated, more efficient and effective business owners, you know, in the fitness industry, raise the standard. And if we collectively do that together by, you know, sharing this knowledge information, then it helps everybody. Fantastic. That is the Trainer HQ podcast signing off, ladies and gentlemen. Boom. Boom.